Once upon a time, there was a farmer named Matthew, who owned a meadow with a great big barn. He usually stored hay in the barn, but for the past couple of harvests, the barn had been empty. Something was eating his crops before he could pick them, so he had no hay to collect. One year, Matthew had had enough and sent his son, Alexander, out to watch the barn during harvest time. Matthew had three sons, Alexander and Benjamin, who worked out in the fields, and his youngest son, Cinderlad, who was the housekeeper. Cinderlad cleaned, swept, cooked, and sometimes woke up in ashes from the fireplace, but he was a good worker. Alexander went to the meadow and fell asleep in the barn. At the stroke of midnight, the barn started shaking furiously. Alexander woke up and ran out of the barn, too scared to stay any longer. The next night, Benjamin went to sleep in the barn instead of Alexander and woke up to the same odd shaking. He too ran home and never looked back. Cinderlad offered to watch the barn on the third night. Alexander and Benjamin told him he'd surely run home, but Cinderlad didn't listen to them. He went down to the barn, made a bed of hay, and sat for hours. At midnight, an earthquake began to shake the walls. Cinderlad looked around, but he did not move. If it gets only a little bit worse, he told himself, I should be able to bear it. The earthquake did become louder, but Cinderlad still did not move. If it gets worse, I think I'll still be able to bear it, he said again. The third rumbling knocked hay down and startled Cinderlad a little, but not enough for him to run away. Just as quickly as the third earthquake had begun, it stopped. Cinderlad sat listening to the silence and heard something munching outside. He got up, crept to the door, and peered outside. A plump, brown stallion with the shiniest coat stood outside, chewing on grass. On its back were a copper saddle, bridle, and an empty suit of armor. So, you made all the noise, Cinderlad said. He could not believe his great fortune and took the horse by the bridle. He spoke softly to the horse and led it to the other side of the meadow, where it could graze happily. Then Cinderlad hid the copper suit of armor behind a tree. In the morning, he went home and Alexander and Benjamin asked how his night was. I slept until morning and didn't find or hear anything, Cinderlad lied. Goodness knows what scared you. Alexander and Benjamin went down to the fields and found the crops hadn't been eaten. The next night, they still refused to watch the barn. Cinderlad went instead, waited through three noisy earthquakes, and crept to the door when it was quiet. A white mare, larger and plumper than the first horse, stood outside munching grass. A saddle bridle, and an empty silver suit of armor were perched on its back. So it's you who's been eating our crops too, Cinderlad said. He spoke softly to the horse, took it by the bridle, and led it to the other side of the meadow, where the first horse was. Again, he hid the silver suit of armor next to the copper armor. The next morning, Alexander and Benjamin snuck down to see if the crops were gone. They weren't. On Cinderlad's third night in the barn, he found a black stallion, more magnificent than the first two, eating the grass. This time, an empty gold suit of armor was perched on its back. Cinderlad greeted the horse and led it to graze with the other two, tucking the gold armor behind a tree with the other two suits. Meanwhile, a nearby king was celebrating the eighteenth birthday of his beautiful daughter, Sienna. In the backyard of the king's palace was a large and very slippery glass hill. 
Now that it was time for Sienna to marry, the king decided to hold a competition to decide who would win his daughter's hand. The king asked Sienna to sit on top of the glass hill with three golden apples in her lap. He then said that whoever could climb to the top of the hill and take the apples would become the next king. Sienna thought it was a silly idea, but she was curious to see if anyone could climb up to her. A huge golden eagle carried Sienna and her throne to the top of the hill and left her there. News of the event traveled far and wide, and Benjamin and Alexander wanted to go try their luck. They left Cinderlad home because they thought he was too dirty and more of a servant than an actual knight. I'll go by myself then, Cinderlad decided after they left, and he went down to the meadow to his three horses. Knights and princes from all over had arrived at the glass hill. They all spent half the day trying to climb the hill and slipping. As the end of the day grew close, their horses became tired, and no one had the energy to climb any more. The king noticed the lack of progress and decided to open the event for another day. Just as the king was about to send everyone home, a knight in shining copper armor rode in. The knight's horse had the glossiest chestnut coat. Everyone called out to the copper knight that the hill was too smooth to climb, but he went on anyway. The horse and knight rode up a quarter of the way and turned to come back down. Sienna marveled at the knight's splendor and hoped he would be able to reach the top. When he turned, she tossed an apple down which landed near his shoe. The knight picked up the apple and rode off. Afterwards, the king invited all the knights to the castle in hopes one of them would have the golden apple. No one did. Alexander and Benjamin had many tales to tell when they arrived back home that night. Cinderlad sat in the ashes and said, Oh, how I wish I could have seen the glass hill and the copper knight myself. Alexander and Benjamin laughed at him. The next day, Benjamin and Alexander visited the glass hill again, but just like the day before, all of the knights who tried slipped. The king decided to leave the event open for a third day, and just as he was about to send everyone home, a knight even grander than the copper one arrived. This knight was clad in bright silver armor, and his horse was as white as snow. He rode halfway up the hill before coming back down. Sienna liked this knight even better, and tossed her second golden apple to him, which rolled down near his shoe. The knight picked it up and cantered away on his horse. Afterwards, the king went to each knight to see if he had the golden apple but no one did. Alexander and Benjamin came home that night and would not stop talking about the silver knight and his gleaming horse. Again, Cinder Lad sat in the ashes and said he wished he had been there to see it. The silver knight was a little bit brighter than the ashes you're sitting in, Alexander said, and Benjamin laughed. The last and final day of the competition was the same as the previous days. No prince or knight could climb the smooth, steep slope without slipping, and everyone gave up after a few tries. The copper and silver knights didn't show up, and the king was about to close the event for good, when a golden knight arrived. His armor was as bright as the sun, and it shone as he galloped up the side of the glass hill on his jet-black horse. At the top, the golden knight bent to pluck the third apple from Sienna's lap, then rode swiftly back down and out of the kingdom. The king called on all the knights to show the apple, but no one had it. Surely someone must have it, he said, frustrated. Back at home, 
Alexander and Benjamin told Cinderlad all about the golden knight and how splendid he was. I wish I could have seen him, Cinderlad cried. The next day, the king ordered everyone in his kingdom to visit the castle. Alexander and Benjamin told Cinderlad to stay home because he was so dirty. The king asked the brothers if there was anyone left at home that might have the golden apple. There is, they said, but he's been in the fireplace all this time. The king ordered them to bring Cinderlad to the castle, which they did. When Cinderlad arrived dressed in sooty rags, the king asked if he had one of the golden apples. I do, your majesty. Cinderlad said, and presented all three apples. Everyone around him gasped as he pulled off his rags to reveal the golden suit of armor underneath. At that moment, Cinderlad was proclaimed the new heir to the kingdom and Princess Sienna's husband-to-be. They were married on top of the glass hill, and Cinderlad never had to sit in ashes again. The end.